Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about the mean free path, and we mean the mean free path between collisions of the electrons moving through the conductor. And it's one of the major reasons why a conductor will have either a high or low resistivity or a high or low conductivity, whichever way you want to look at it. So there's two things we're going to consider. First of all, the concept of what is a mean free path. And as you can see here illustrated, an electron trying to move through the conductor is going to be colliding with the atoms that are in the conductor, which of course have the other electrons around them. So here's an atom, there's an atom, there's an atom, and of course they're constantly vibrating as the, because of the thermal agitation or the, the thermal energy of the, con, of the atoms in the conductor. And so the electron is going to be bumping around from atom to atom, making those collisions. The fewer the collisions, the more freely the electrons can travel through the conductor. So the fewer the collisions, the greater the conductivity and the smaller the resistivity. Now, fewer collisions is caused by having larger distances travel before the collisions occur. So the mean free pad is the average distance between the collisions. Here we have, for example, three paths taken by this electron before it collides. We take the distance 1, distance 2, distance 3, add them together, divide by 3, and that would be the average distance traveled between collisions or the mean free path. Of course, there'll be a whole lot more than just three of those paths. There'll be billions of those paths divided by the billions of, uh, divided by billions, but the concept is there. It's simply the average distance taken by the electron before it collides with another electron of another atom. Now here, for copper, silver, gold, and aluminum, we have the average distance traveled, and it turns out it's in nanometers, 39 nanometers for copper, for silver it's 56.4, for gold it's 56.0, and for aluminum it's 18.3. I added another decimal point to see that there's a, a very slight difference between silver and copper. Here we have a slightly greater distance for silver than for uh, gold, I should say, and therefore silver is a better conductor, has a higher conductivity and a lower resistivity than gold. Notice aluminum has the shortest path, so therefore by that alone you should say that aluminum is probably the worst of the four conductors. And if you take a look here at the resistivity, Greater resistivity means a poorer conductor. Aluminum does have the highest resistivity, is therefore the poorest of the four conductors. Um, let's see here. Silver is the best. Silver has the longest or largest average distance. But you would say, since silver and gold are so close together, you would expect the resistivity to be much closer together between silver and gold, and it's not. The reason for that is when you go back up here and you look at ionization energies. Notice that it takes a lot more energy to free that last electron for gold as it does for silver or copper. So when you take those two concepts together, you can see why gold would still be a good conductor because the large path between collisions, but not as good as it could be because it takes more energy to remove that last electron. And again, those are only two of the three factors. We'll look at the third factor in a future video, but now at least you get to see why you would have a good conductor or a poor conductor also based upon the mean free path. And that's how it works.